So I am sitting here having lunch with, uh, actually, make your own introduction. I'm here having, watching Anthony having lunch. I am Benjamin, the music composer and coordinator at Freedom. Mm -hmm. And this is Anthony. I do stuff. He does stuff. Uh, so we were sitting here, we were talking, and I realized I had my, uh, my tripod here for other reasons. And uh, I figured that the Freedom family might also be interested in kind of hearing what we're talking about. So, Illuminati confirmed. So I had just asked you, um, if you were in an elevator, right, and you had until the time, you know, from the ground floor up to the 20th floor to explain what's going on in the music factory right now, how would you do that? What? I'll give you two minutes. Two minutes? That's Five. a slow elevator. Yeah. All right. One of those old timey ones that we gotta pull up. Well, the Music Factory is a royalty free music model that uh, we create music for a catalog similar to Epidemic Sound uh, that is free for all of our partners to use. And we would never, ever claim a monetization strike against any of them for any reason because we own all the music and it's made in house. Okay, how is it made in house? Like, do we have, like, and I, I already know the answer to this question, but. Let me be a little bit silly here. Um, so when you say that it's made in house, um, are we like bringing in like you know the, the guys with the with the weird sticks and like you yes, know, I have one actually. Really, you have one of those? The baton. So that's like what it's really called. Is that just what you call? That's a baton. Yeah, it's a little yeah, the conductor's baton. Oh, cool. So like, are we bringing in like you know like huge symphonies and orchestras or? Well, no. Uh, we're using symphony libraries mm -hmm. that are pre-recorded samples, and we use that with a piano, and we record the music that we want to create that's in our heads. Uh, we have two other composers currently on staff, myself, Jim Talarock, and Michael Bulal. He is uh, brand new. Um, and we work together, we create music, we collaborate, and we release different styles from symphonic to electronic to rock and roll and jazz. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I heard that uh, you've been sort of dabbling in EDM lately. Yes. Is there something you want to, like, let anybody know? Like, are, are you going to, like, shave half of your head and do the whole Skrillex thing? Well, or? I already got a tattoo. What? How old is that? I've never seen that. 2009. Like, I've, I've been working with him for months, and I've never seen that. Yeah. I, I put it up there on purpose so the shirt would cover it. Nice. So then it's like, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. I, I am not inked in any way. He doesn't. So. He doesn't get it. Anyway, Harry Potter reference. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Wait, is it? Are you saying you want to see my wand? What were we talking about? <laughs> I lost track. Uh, EDM music, right? EDM music. EDM music. So I've been stealing, up, <clears throat> borrowing, being inspired a lot by guys like Dead Mouse and Armin Van Buren, uh, Skrillex, kind of. But I'm not really a dubstep fan. So that's that's where I've been kind of pitching my tent in those you know, two guys' uh, genres because that's what I like. I like the uh, pitching my tent is not. It's a reference to camping, not a reference to this guy right here. All right. And I promised him that I wouldn't let it, let this video paint him in a negative light. I'm doing that all on my own, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't need my help, man. Uh, you've been doing stuff with um, like orchestral stuff. Yeah. Now you're looking to go into be like EDM and all that. Um, what kind of uh, like software are you using? Well, I use uh, the Zebra synthesizer. Synthesizer. Uh, there's the Beat Collection by Artoria, which is basically a big collection of recreated old-style synthesizers like the CS80, the uh, the, the Moog, the Modular Synth, the Prophet, uh, something Prophet. No, I can't remember. Uh, a whole bunch of others. Using those two main software as well as some other patches like Atmosphere. So those all come together, and I create beats with them. And then whatever comes into my head, that's what I, I produce, or whatever I hear from someone else, that's what I steal, borrow, get inspired by. Yeah. yeah. Uh, recently, there was a uh, a thing that the t your team entered into. Yeah. Um, it was a it was a thing having to do with Albert Einstein. Ah, the genius contest. Yeah. Can you fill me in on that? There was there was a show. There's a show coming out in National Geographic called Genius. And it's the life of Albert Einstein as played by Jeffrey Rush as Einstein. Yeah. Hey, that sounds familiar? Jeffrey Rush played uh, Barbosa in the Pirates of the Caribbean okay. movies. Yeah. So he's one of my favorite actors. 
and I really was uh, excited because this was an opportunity to potentially get to meet Hans Zimmer and Lauren Balfe, which are two big composers. And, you know, they did the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, they did uh, Batman and Light and a whole bunch of others. The Lion King, that's what he's most famous for, Hans Zimmer. So, uh, yeah, anyway, we didn't win, but it, we had a lot of fun. Uh, me and two other guys worked on that one together, and it was just an absolute blast. In that, you guys essentially recreated the trailer, right? Yeah, we took uh, the original trailer from National Geographic. We tried to remove a lot of the music and isolate the vocal stuff, the, the speech, and then um, we made our own track underneath all of that. Oh, cool. Was that was that difficult, sort of isolating? Because I'm sure that there was background music underneath them speaking, right? Yes, it was insanely difficult. Uh, so much so that I actually had to go against tradition and turn the music up louder so that the vocals were kind of drowned out a little bit because you could still hear the background music over the vocals. Sort of moving on from that, um, you had uh, you had done some work previously here at Freedom with a vocalist. Yes. Is she still on board? Is she? She comes in every month or so and records nursery rhymes for us. Nursery rhymes. Now you can see her at the Kids Hub. Now, pray tell. Tell me more about these uh, nursery rhymes. I don't want to. So these nursery rhymes are basically... I say as I sensuously uh, eat pizza. The nursery rhymes range from anything from Bob Bob Black Sheep to uh, Green Sleeves, which is actually, interestingly, a nursery rhyme of... It's actually an old Celtic tune about a prostitute who wore green sleeves. But we're using it on the nursery rhyme uh, you know, channel for some reason. There's no, there's no like allusions to sex or anything. Bring Around the Rosie is about the bubonic plague, so... I don't know how accurate that is, but I've heard that. I've yeah. heard that. I know that there's stuff you can't talk about, because, spoilers, but what can you talk why, about? Why can't I? George talks about everything. Wait, leave that out. Edit that out. What can you tell us about what's coming up here with uh, Music Factory, Freedom, etc.? Well, um, I can hint at a contest we're working on. Uh, for local composers here. I can't give any details on it because we're still not finalized on the details. Now when you say local, you're talking about here in the Philippines. That's right. Here in the Philippines, we're having an international contest to look for a composer. And we're meeting this week with someone to discuss the details. One of the other things we're working on is a uh, collaboration with Rainimator. He's producing a trailer for a series he'll be working on. He's using one of my tracks and I'll be doing some voiceover work for him as well. So, where can people get um, the, the music from Music Factory? One of these two corners. Oh. Is this a mirror image, or is it going to be over there? You're, you're creating a lot of work for me with cards. Yeah, he, he gets it. Okay, yeah, the eye. Click that eye over Anthony's head to download all now of I'm our Now I'm going to flip the image just to make it look good. Click, or, or <laughs> click this. I hate you. Pretend this is an award speech. You're like, I'd like to thank mom. I'd like to thank the janitor from my high school. I'd like to thank that police officer who showed me the doll and asked if I could point to where. In all seriousness, I do want to uh, go back to a joke I made about stealing music. Because I'm against that as a rule, but um, one of the greatest composers of all time, one of the greatest artists of all time, actually, Picasso, Pablo Picasso, and Shostakovich. Uh, uh, we're both quoted as saying something along the lines of good artists borrow, great artists steal. So in that sense, I'm stealing music from others because it inspires me and it, it makes me excited. And so I would like to really thank all the big guys out there, the ones who I'm standing on their shoulders and learning from, and the people of the forum, the people I work with, uh, especially uh, Jim Tylerock, he's a fantastic musician. And so it's honored, it's honored to work with all these people and to be in that realm. So I'm actually glad that you you sort of mentioned that and clarified because in the world of comedy, it's said that an original joke hasn't been written since the invention of electricity. Um, or are there are other variations that hasn't been written in the last 200 years, so on and so forth. Um, but sort of that same idea that there is sometimes a very thin line between inspiration and then not inspiration. Um, 
So, where is that line for you? <laughs> That's a really hard question. Mm. Uh, because sometimes that line is me transcribing, which means writing down exactly what I heard someone else do, and then just making altercations to make it my own. Uh, and that's one way where I can learn how to write what they wrote, and then make it into something that I want to say. So sort of writing something in their style? Writing exactly what they wrote. Line for line, note for note. But then changing it so that yeah. it's got that same feel, but it's not exactly. the same. Um, are you familiar with the works of um, the almighty Alfred Yankovic? Uh, say that again. Alfred Yankovic? Weird Al? Oh. I thought that's what you were saying, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, I'm familiar with the, the accordion player. Yeah. yeah, so he does these things that he refers to as style parodies. Yes. Um, which I assume start out much the same way. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if you're familiar enough to say that that's sort of what you're referring to? No. No? No. Um, what I'm referring to, and maybe you can uh, reference a clip here or something, is if you listen to John Williams' uh, Star Wars uh, Imperial March, it's actually very heavily based on the Mars theme from, uh, not, not Mars, Mars, yeah, Mars from the planets by Gustav Holst. Um, and, and you can hear this if you just if you listen and compare the two, you'll see that. And he says this in interviews that he was inspired by that track to make this Lord Vader's theme. And that's the kind of inspiration I'm talking about, where he will take something note for note, play it back, and then turn it a little bit, change a few notes here and there, move the rhythm around to something that he likes, something that sounds like him on paper. Like retool. Yeah, like retool. Awesome. Well, I've had a wonderful time here. Thank you for watching me eat pizza. For those watching at home, it wasn't just me eating pizza. He, he actually finished his salad quite early. <laughs> um, I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has, let us know in the comment section down below. There are other people here at the Freedom Office that I would like to meet with and do something similar to what we've done here. If you're interested in that, let us know and I'll do more. Till next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all those things that make us love our jobs. Also, be awesome to yourself and amazing to each other. Bye.